Mycobacterium leprae is a rod-shaped bacteria which was first discovered in 1873 by Hansen. Mycobacterium lepra is a non-tuberculosis mycobacteria, and it causes a disease called leprosy, or Hansen disease. In the U.S., the animal reservoir for Mycobacterium leprae are armadillos. Now, Mycobacterium leprae is an acid-fast bacillus, which means it's resistant to decolorization by acids, and it has a high content of mycolic acid in its cell wall, which makes it waxy, hydrophobic, and impermeable to routine stain like gram stain. So it needs special staining methods to be visualized, like zeal nielsen staining, which uses carbyl fusion combined with phenol, which is able to penetrate the waxy mycobacterial cell wall. So the stain binds to the mycolic acid in the mycobacterial cell wall, and after staining, an acid decolorization solution is applied, which removes the red dye from the background cells, tissue fibers, and any organisms in the smear except mycobacteria, which retains the dye. So mycobacterium leprae appears bright red on the blue background. Other staining methods can be used, such as kinyun staining, in which the bacteria appear bright red on a green background, and fluorescence microscopy, using specific fluorescent dyes like aramine rhodamine stain. Now, Mycobacterium leprae is an obligate intracellular microorganism, which means it can survive only inside cells. And it's an obligate aerobe, which means it can survive only in the presence of oxygen. Finally, Mycobacterium leprae grows best at cool temperatures, between 27 and 33 degrees Celsius. And it proliferates slowly, and it cannot be cultivated in vitro. Instead, it can be inoculated in nine-banded armadillos which have a much lower body temperature than most mammals, and, like humans, are susceptible to leprosy. Now, Mycobacterium leprae can enter the body through the lungs or broken skin. Once inside the body, it goes for regions in which the temperature is lower than the rest of the body, like the skin, peripheral nerves, and mucosa of the upper respiratory tract. So the bacteria goes for the Schwann cells of peripheral nerves. These cells wrap their plasma membrane around peripheral nerve axons, forming the myelin sheath. This is possible because of a virulence factor called phenolic glycolipid 1, or PGL1 for short, which attaches to a protein called laminin 2, which is found on the Schwann cells. Binding to Schwann cells induces demyelination, affecting transmission of electrical impulses through the nerve axon, and causing nerve injury. Additionally, Mycobacterium leprae can also infect skin macrophages. So the bacteria is ingested by macrophages and wrapped up in a vesicle called a phagosome, which would normally merge with another intracellular organelle called a lysosome. Inside the phagolysosome, the bacteria would normally be destroyed. But Mycobacterium leprae has the ability to inhibit the phagolysosomal fusion, which allows the bacteria to survive inside the macrophages and replicate there. Now the host responds to leprosy through cell-mediated immunity via T helper cells. These cells help the activity of other immune cells by releasing T-cell cytokines. And there are two types of T-helper cells, Th1 and Th2. Depending on which T-helper cells are involved in the immune response, there are two major forms of leprosy, lepromidis and tuberculoid. Now, in the lepromidis form, the infection induces a Th2 cell response. And Th2 cells secrete interleukin-4, interleukin-5, and interleukin-10. These molecules are cytokines, which means that they signal B cells to make antibodies against Mycobacterium leprae. So this is a type of humoral, antibody-based response. Now, this response is not effective in killing intracellular pathogens like Mycobacterium leprae that can escape humoral immune mechanisms and replicate inside macrophages. So the inefficient immune response seen in the lepromatous form is sometimes also called a low cell-mediated immunity response. This leads to extensive skin involvement and symmetric nerve involvement, and the lepromatous form is also called multibacillary leprosy because of the large number of bacteria found in the lesions. On the other hand, which is tuberculoid form, the infection induces a Th1 response, and Th1 cells secrete interleukin-2 and interferon gamma. So interleukin-2 activates cytotoxic T cells, and interferon gamma activates macrophages and natural killers, to produce chemicals that destroy ingested bacteria directly, leading to a cell-mediated response. This response is effective in destroying Mycobacterium leprae, 
So this immune response is sometimes also called a high cell mediated immunity response. Hence, with the tuberculoid form, there's a limited number of skin lesions, and nerve involvement is usually asymmetric. This form is also called posibacillary leprosy because of the low number of bacteria in the skin lesions. Alright, now risk factors for developing leprosy include close contact with infected individuals and armadillos, as well as older age in immunosuppressive states like diabetes, malignancy, or an underlying HIV infection. With the lepromatous form, there are numerous raised, poorly demarcated skin lesions that can be found on extensor surfaces of the extremities. Within these skin patches, there might be diminished sensation or a loss of sensation altogether. And overall, there's a loss of sensation in the limbs with a glove and stocking distribution. There might also be paresthesias, which are abnormal dermal sensations like tingling or numbness in the hands or feet, lumps or swelling on the earlobes or face, which can result in a lion-like or leonine facies, and body hair loss, especially eyebrows and eyelashes. Worst case scenario, things progress towards gradual destruction of the extremities, so the nose might collapse due to nasal septum destruction, and fingers and toes might necrose and fall off. Yikes. With the lepromatous form, there can also be ocular involvement in the form of chronic uveitis, meaning the inflammation of the uvea, which is the pigmented layer of the eye. There might also be facial nerve paralysis that leads to leg ophthalmos, which is the inability to close the eyelids completely. This can result in corneal ulceration due to corneal exposure and eye drying. With the tuberculoid form, on the other hand, there are hypopigmented or reddish patches on the skin, which are rare and well demarcated, and nerve involvement is usually mild, but there can be tender, enlarged peripheral nerves. In late stages, there's weakness of the hands with claw fingers, and foot drop which is the inability to lift the front of the foot. On the bright side though, no fingers are falling off. Now, diagnosis can be done by identifying Mycobacterium leprae in a skin biopsy of an active lesion, and examining it under a microscope. In the lepromatous form, there are lipid-laden macrophages, called foam cells, containing many acid-fast bacilli. While in the tuberculoid form, there are very few acid-fast bacilli, and granulomas, which are collections of immune cells. Mycobacterium leprae can also be identified through PCR, which directly detects bacterial DNA. Finally, a lepromin skin test might be done to determine what type of leprosy a person has. This is when an extract of inactivated M. leprae is injected intradermally. And if an induration appears after 48 hours, it means that there's a cell-mediated immune response against the organism. So this test is negative in lepromatous form and positive in tuberculoid form. Treatment for leprosy is done with multi-drug therapy to prevent resistance. So the lepromatous form is treated with dapsone, rifampin, and clofazamine for 12 months, while the tuberculoid form is treated with dapsone and rifampin for 6 months. Alright, as a quick recap, Mycobacterium leprae is an acid-fast bacillus, obligate intracellular aerobe, which cannot be cultivated in vitro. It has the ability to infect Schwann cells and skin macrophages, and causes a disease called leprosy, or Hansen disease. According to the type of cell-mediated immunity response, there are two major forms of leprosy. Lepromatous, which is the result of Th2 cells, or low cell-mediated immunity, and tuberculoid, which is the result of Th1 cells, or high cell-mediated immunity. Diagnosis can be done by identifying Mycobacterium leprae in a skin biopsy with microscopy or PCR. Treatment is done with dapsone, rifampin, and clofazamine for the lepromatous form, and dapsone and rifampin for the tuberculoid form.